What's up, people? Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Chris Angel. I'm assuming you know me because you're here. Um, but if you don't, that's who I am. And uh, this is my friend, Maurice Thibodeau. Hi, Maurice. Hey. Uh, I, I'm excited about discussing your uh, life inventory assessment because I think this as a tool for coaches is uh, could be a game changer. Um, I, I've taken the assessment twice. Um, and you and I have had lengthy conversations around not only my own results, but then also this inventory assessment as a tool. So I want to, uh, I think it's important for the coaching industry to have, um, I don't need to say standards because I'm a creative person, but I think it should have tools that help us mm, or enhance our intuition. And I think this tool is a great place to start to focus our interactions with our clients as coaches. So um, maybe just give everybody a sense of who you are. Um, how did you come across this life inventory assessment that you created? And, and then we can go from there. No, I definitely will. Um, I'm <laughs> the way my brain works. Um, um, is I just want to make sure you said something really beautiful that I want to come back to. Um, and it was really you have whiteboards all over your house. Whiteboards yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank thanks, Chris. My name is Maurice Thibodeau, and I really came into this work. I I really call it it's in selfish pursuit of my own happiness and my own mm. fulfillment. Mm. It probably started with more of an ego, uh, I would say external, like, hey, I want the most out of life. And then uh and then it transferred to a to a deeper set of meaning of what does fulfillment really, really mean? I started to ask even deeper questions. Uh, my my path to figuring out life uh, really was to I mean I, I like to evaluate things I chunk down I really look at the details and when we're looking at our life it's pretty complex mm. so I wanted to make sure and understand my life in all the different categories and am I making the right decisions mm. part of it was probably mm. my own fear of making the wrong decisions mm. and I invited my wife into that process and we really used it as a foundation for our connection and our growth uh, so I, I, I did that for 15 years. I was wow. looking at frameworks and just looking at my mm. own life. And then when I left the corporate career, um, which was a really big deep dive into what am I going to do now? That's going to yeah. really fill my soul. Mm. Uh, and I started to work with clients as a coach. I would pull out this framework, this framework that I'd been tinkering with for a number of years because I knew it and it helped yeah. me just like get crystal clear with what was going on in their world. And then we'd focus on work that mattered the most. And after doing that on whiteboards for yeah, yeah. like over a year, I woke up one morning, I'm like, no, like I need mm -hmm. to develop this. I need to develop this in a way that other coaches can use it. Mm -hmm. So it was, I was building something I didn't know I was building that would become yeah. one of my easily so far, um, my most important thing that I've created in my life, yeah. this has become. So how did you? Path. How, uh, yeah, I love that. How how were when you were doing it on whiteboards with clients for a year? How were how was what you were doing different than what you had been doing as a coach before? Like what what were the things you were noticing that made this helpful as a coach? Uh, great question. I uh, my path into coaching was in in connecting with people. I wasn't like a coach that wanted to become a different coach. I was a business guy doing business development and creating. So when I went into coaching, it was I don't know if I can answer how it was different. This was what yeah. this was one of the first foundational things that mm. I actually started to use because it was what yeah. I knew and mm. what helped the most. Sure, because it was what you had done for your own life. It was yeah, yeah. the process you had. It's like you use what you, you yeah. yeah, you use right. what you know, and that's this yeah. was of all the other things I'd been exposed to, which was a lot. Yeah. Uh, this was still like oh no, like well, this is what we're going to use. Just in in pretend here, maybe you can imagine what 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 do you think it would have been like if you hadn't had this framework? You're like, okay, I'm meeting with people, and what mm. do you think you would have done? You know? Yeah. Well, I I certainly I remember the feeling uh -huh. absolutely of being like, uh, am I? Uh, the words were like, am I good enough? Am I going to like show up uh, and and be able to give the value that I that I think I can give. Yeah. And those questions actually gravitated me to this. It wasn't a, I'm going to use this. It was in flow and process of working with clients where I would end up using this. 
And I was really grateful because it brought like, there was, there was no question. Like when we would whiteboard back then I would do a circle and that was them. And then I would do a spider chart with all the different life categories. And then we would have these deep discussions. And at the end, I would take pictures of the whiteboard and they would come out with this really tangible understanding of what their life picture was in that moment, in that stage of their life. And not only that, we could look at it and say, okay, well, what of all this stuff, I've got a big whiteboard just just over there and we would do like it's it's like a six foot and when someone takes a step back and say whoa okay there's my life yeah it's really it's humbling it's sobering sometimes it's motivating uh sometimes it's triggering yeah but it's there yeah yeah and and having it there as a coach allowed us to really focus on where do we want to go next Mm -hmm. and that as a coach that that was just a really solid confident place for me to be yeah and and to know that we were working on what mattered most for them yeah and that we were on the same page like okay here, here's it is we're gonna do action items in your relationship because it yeah. looks like it would have the biggest benefit so let's make a plan around that i i feel like it's probably important to dig into a, a little bit how it's different from a life wheel because you know at a very basic level, you could do the same thing with a life wheel and say, okay, there's seven categories is pretty common for a life wheel. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. you're going to grade yourself on the wheel at one to 10. Mm -hmm. And we can all stand back and look at it. And we can both agree you need to work on relationships and we can come up with an action plan. I mean, all of that is very similar, but I've experienced your life inventory assessment and I I can see how different it is, but I want, I I would love to hear from you. Like, how is it different than a simple life wheel? Yeah. Well, the the difference would be in breaking down uh, the nuances and the complexities of of our humanness. Um, To put that in more plain language, uh, I actually start with it has similarities. You take that level, that life wheel and expand it to 13 life categories. So it feels more complete. That's first. And then usually you're only asking one question in that life. It's usually like how, how happy or how fulfilled we ask that nice. question and four others. We yeah. do one in the mind, one that the one that does a body, a somatic activation. Yeah. How do you feel about this category when you when you check in with your body? And then we do three support wellness measures. Yep. And those are capability. Mm-hmm. What's your sense of capability in this category? Um, your time alignment. Are you mm-hmm. spending the right time? And your presence, your engagement. Yeah. And you're there. And when we put those measures yeah. in place. Now a whole perspective, like a much more detailed view. And this is why it's so important for a coach Mm -hmm. to be, um, to be assisting somebody when they look at this view, because there's a lot of elements in play. We're really complex beings with a coach that's studied and get certified to use this tool. Mm -hmm. Now you can kind of guide them to those insights to say, Oh, okay. So, you know, you take the simplicity of that, with that, that wellness wheel. Yep. But now you break it down into why. Yeah. Why right. are you feeling the way you're feeling? And what are the levers that we might be able to work yeah. on that's going to have the most impact for you? So it's it's so much yeah. more robust. Yeah, um, I, that was my experience of it. And I, the two things that are coming in for me are, one, um, that – Every because there are more layers, you've got the, the the 13 categories plus the supporting the supporting questions. And then you have in the report, you can see the gauges that sort of show um, each each of those additional data points or touch points become m- more places to investigate or, or inquire with the client. So if the client that's the first thing, the second thing is if the client typically when I do a life wheel, I'm just doing a life wheel and it's subjective to however I'm feeling today to grade myself. And that could change next week. If I was in a bad mood, like it just, it changes, but because you have the supporting questions, it's taking it out of your hand as the client and out of my hand as the coach. And it's kind of giving us a neutral, um, diagnostic, a a neutral party, a neutral uh, thing that is giving us the chance to come together to talk about it rather than you subjectively grading it, however you want to grade it. And me, the coach trying to interpret your, your subjectiveness, you know? So, yeah, yeah, I, I I think, um, so what I wanted to add about the gauges then, because it has these extra elements is, you know, you, 
people pay you as a coach for the things you have them do. It's, I think as a long, for a long time as a coach, I felt like I needed to prove my value by saying smart things. Right. I needed to prove my value as a coach by having really good insights. Yep. And I like to have insights, but it's, but it's a lot of pressure when you can have a, um, a tool that gives you multiple places to look. Yep. It extends the conversation. In other words, it gives you as a coach more places to have your client go to work. They they can self-direct the work. They can decide what the work is, but it gives you more places to begin to design something for their transformation. Yeah. It, it val, you know, in a, I call it a sense-making tool. It's not a science. It's a sense-making yeah. tool of what's yeah. happening in the inner world of your client. And uh, when you're working with somebody, it really validates what's mm. happening. So you can approach it with curiosity yeah. and say, and, and look at the patterns and say, hey, I think I see something here. Can you tell me more about that? Yep. And it allows the client to express and to understand. It's like, oh, well, how was I feeling about that? And mm. and if you have, so one of the, the, the beautiful thing you said about intuition mm. um, is, with this tool and in the training, I encourage our coaches to trust. Yeah. Trust, use your intuition. Yeah. That's a really beautiful part of connection that we've kind of lost, I think, along the way. So yeah. I say trust it. Yeah. But but trust it without expectation or attachment. Don't come in as advice. Mm. Your intuition isn't necessarily advice. It's something that you can offer as a potential insight for you to partner with the client and explore together. Yeah. And when you're doing that with a tool that actually shows patterns and it yeah. shows like that yeah. it highlights dissatisfied states in a major way. Hey, you've got this, you know, yeah. I, 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 I don't know if I should pop it up, but I've, I've had a couple of inklings to actually show it on screen, but we'll see if we, if that makes sense. And there might be um, opportunities if you're watching this that we can put screenshots on the on the landing page too here so people can see yeah. Yeah. sort of what we're talking about underneath it. Yeah. Yeah, that will be important. Yeah. I think um, one of the things that I noticed too or the thoughts I had about it was <clears throat> I've been a coach since uh, 2011. I, technically, I've done coaching even before that, but I started my own coaching company in 2011. Have done it ever since. So 12, 12-ish years. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of the things about coaching is just, it's, it can be hard to sell. Yeah. Coaching can be a hard thing to sell. Yeah. Um, partly because as coaches, we don't like to sell ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want to support people. We want to raise, uh, raise people up. We want to, you know, yep. but to sell ourselves to be a marketer mm -hmm. is not great. And, and then to come up with, well, what is it that I'm selling? <laughs> what do I say that I'm selling? That was really hard for me. I mean, I I made it. I, I I'm still a coach. I'm still here 12 years in. I mean, that's some longevity, but but it's it was a grind a lot of times, and it was my least favorite part. But yeah. one of the things I've noticed is that it is easier to sell a tool, yes, than it is to sell myself. It's easier to point people to something tangible and pragmatic than it is to say, "Let me be your coach, and it'll be great." <laughs> you know, Absolutely. you're like. And I, I just want to point to that because I think um, when I was going through the mm -hmm. assessment, I'm like, God, this is really powerful. If I were able to help clients, potential clients, future clients see the value of a diagnostic so that we could really investigate their logical brain. That is the one that's going to make a, yep. a buying decision yep, or at least justify the buying decision yep. can really latch on to like, I can see how this tool is really going to help me. Yep. I remember uh, the, the the gut wrenching, like making the process of making my coaching offers, right? And what do mm -hmm. they look like? And is the pricing yeah. right? And how do I word it? And mm -hmm. one of the one of the gifts uh, I'll, I'll say of this training, yeah. and it's hard because about class four or five, mm -hmm. um, every student starts to create their own offer. It's a requirement. It's one of the classes where we all support each other nice. and everyone creates an offer using this assessment yeah. and mm -hmm. it makes it really simple, right? It's like, yeah. Hey, yeah. I mean, uh, and some of the language that comes out is really, it's just amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Thinking about my last class and some of the students, what they came up with brilliant. Mm -hmm. And we push through those like fear factors because we're doing it all together and yeah. you come out with an offer, a brand new product, a brand new service with a tool behind it yep. 
And when I love it as an introductory point or yep. uh, with, with clients, because you, when we ended up spending two hours on yours the first time <laughs> yeah, and, you know, you ended up, you know, sharing, you know, things yeah. in your life that, you know, we intimately knew each other. Um, yeah. Right. When you create a safe space as a coach, mm -hmm. allow someone to be fully seen, whatever their life map looks like. Yeah. And then you offer, right. Some guidance of what's next. And that's really what the life review, that's the great safe space, find yeah. the insights and the focus within the life map, and then move to actions that are going to help someone have a higher quality of life. Mm. You yeah. do that for a client. They're yeah. like, they're going to want to work with you as long as you're fit, obviously, to be yeah. integrity of that relationship. And then, and, and then you're, you're, then you're running. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a really powerful way for coaches to connect quickly. Yeah. And to create yeah. that, that trust space. And then after that, it's like, then you bring your magic, whatever your niche is, right? right? Then right, you right. bring your, your magic as a coach. That's where you say, well, hey, this is what I specialize yeah. in. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you could you you could be um, some type of a gestalt. I have some um, coaches that are equine gestalt coaches, right, who partner with horses mm. to coach clients. Yeah. You could have life inventory assessment <clears throat> and then go use your modality of coaching. You could be That's... some sort of tant tantric coach. You could be a, there's all kinds of things you could be that, in modality, but this supports all of that. Yeah, I like that. Yep. That's that that's really well said. And the other thing it really helps you to do is whatever, let's say you, um you're focused on relationships or you're focused yep. on finances, even one of the things you can do with the life map, I go like this because it like you see everything in bubbles, is yeah, you can look at one life category and then you can start to show how it affects all the others. Yeah, right. That's good. So you can say, hey, our work in this area is actually going to rub off on a bunch of your other areas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you could be a business coach. Yeah. Right. And actually, but, but you know, as a coach, if, you know, the whole, there's a whole person here and who they are as a whole person shows up at work and impacts their decisions of what they're doing in their business, et cetera. I mean, it's really good. The other thing that came up as you were just describing that is that it's also, easy for a client to share it with others in their life. Like it, it, it's shareable. So yes, whether it's for referral purposes or co colleagues or friends, and they're like, look at my chart, what did it, you know, here's what it shows. It creates curiosity in others. So I think it, um, but there's a word, it's not viral. There's a word I'm thinking of, but it's, it's interesting enough mm -hmm. for people to want to share it with others. And I think that's important. Yeah. And I use it. So I like couples work is the very first spot. Like that's actually the origin mm -hmm. story of a, yeah. a lot of the foundation is my wife and I using it together and comparing each other's life map and wow. seeing where we were in flow and in, 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 in perpetual incongruence mm -hmm. and then just respecting that and being wow. like, Hey, actually I value this and you value mm -hmm. that. Wow. We still love each other, but maybe we need kind of a different That's plan and how we like live together that way. Mm. And then for, for businesses, mm -hmm. uh, I love like, this is a connection tool. So for, yeah. if you bring this into a business as a workshop, yeah. uh, where people really just show their humanness, mm, yeah. that everyone yeah. has something that they're working on. They don't necessarily even have to share it with, with each sure. other. Uh, but it really kind of, like huh. for any business that yeah. is really into wholeness that is like yep. sees their employees and takes a sense of some sense of responsibility for the whole person health of that uh, of their yeah. people yeah this is a, a really great workshop to introduce or to have your internal coaches um, be tooled with i was a uh, i was a ceo for 5 years um and when i came into that company it was <clears throat> it it I would just say it was it had its own culture, but it 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 worked for a few and not for a lot. So we, the the retention wasn't great, except for those who fit in that culture. And part of what I noticed about the turnaround that we had, I felt like was <clears throat> that people started one people felt safe, but people wanted to talk to each other, and um, it was a more open discussion about the whole person, yeah. right, rather than water cooler complaints or. Um, you know, production angst, there was this additional conversation about life. And I think in a corporation, yeah, having something that brings 
people, the human yes. to work <clears throat> yeah. only serves retention. It only serves a better culture. Yeah. Particularly <laughs> for things like team retreats or yeah. right, ex exactly. Yeah. Like it's, it, there's a really nice, <laughs> yeah. There, there's a really nice um, spot there. Which is, so yeah. So one of the things that I wanted to uh, point to with the culture inside of a company or corporation is, you know, uh, there's so there can be depending on how big the company is, there can be so many corny, you know, culture initiatives, and yeah. it's easy from the top to be like, okay, here's how I know how we're going to fix culture, right? And we go, yep. okay, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to have this thing, <clears throat> and I did that, and yep. I fell flat on my face because everybody was like, oh, great. Here's, mm -hmm. here's one more thing that somebody thinks they're going to do to try to make this. <clears throat> it doesn't, what I learned from failing was it doesn't work like that. It's more yeah. grassroots yeah. and it's person to person having meaningful conversations. And, and thankfully I was stubborn enough to get there, but if I had had a tool like this, I just think it would have opened <clears throat> conversation for them to talk to each other yeah. when I wasn't around. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so grateful for that you had that mindset as a CEO. Uh, Cause that's like, I would, I, it only works if you're approaching a CEO with that or, or someone, right? VP of HR or whatever that has that mindset yeah. and that will see it. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful for you that you, like you had that mindset. And he, yeah. I, I wish I'd met you back then, but this wasn't ready. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Right. All, all things in due time. Yeah. Got it. <clears throat> Do you, do you have some, um, it might be interesting to show sort of what it looks like. And I'm happy for you to use my, my results. If you want to use that. <clears throat> oh yeah. That's uh... being transparent with all of you watching this. I'm revealing <laughs> the depths well, of my life and where I'm aligned right now. Well, and that's, that's really aligned with who you are and how you operate. So I really appreciate that so, so much. Yeah, and of course it's like, it's, it's always an honor just to do this one-on-one -on -one with someone that opens up mm -hmm. their life details for, so for you to, to offer that is, uh, is pretty special. So yeah, I think that would make sense. So people <clears throat> could maybe better understand when we talk about, uh, bubbles and things. Yeah. Um, you can see your life map right in the big I picture. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, so what we were talking about, right, is these are all different life categories. So right now you leveled, you, you rated contribution, your contribution, yep. which yep. I compared your life maps and this was really quite interesting. Mm. Uh, your contribution priority mm. right now, you ranked it number one. Mm. Um, last time you did this, it was the second, it was number six. And that was three years ago. So interesting, was, you know, right. And you talk about going through that, that yeah. transition. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. so I think that I mean, before it was, it was your talents. That was number one, but you had a, a real significant shift, which is great. This is, this is a sense making tool. So yeah. right there, um, yeah. that gives us a bridge of conversation to say, Hey, Chris, what's been going on in your life? Like you yeah. went from, from mm -hmm. contribution being number six on your priority list. Yeah. So before it would have been where financial is right now yeah. to number one. And it's not only number one, it's in complete fulfillment. It's in the flow <laughs> yeah. state. You know, it's yeah. a, it's a nine out of 10 where your head and your heart said the same thing about mm -hmm. how happy you are with the contribution that you're making yeah. in the world. It's a bridge of discussion. Um, yeah. I, I want to, one of the observations I had after getting this, these results was um, <clears throat> looking at the things that are in flow for me. And then yeah. looking at finances, which is my smallest little circle over there in the old action and watch <laughs> category. Yep. Yep. And I thought, how do I, my insight was, um, I tend to think um, finances annoy me, right? Yep. I've set my life up to make a lot of money. I'm not making a lot of money right now because I'm in the middle of building something. Yes. But I thought how, whereas where I would normally turn a blind eye to it and just be like, I don't want to think about that. It'll take care of itself as I go. I started to think, huh, I wonder how I could learn from the things that are in flow and apply that to finances. How could I be more intentional with finances the way I'm doing it with my contribution and spiritual side of my life? Yeah. And that absolutely. was instructive for me. That was helpful because now I was in a place of agency and ownership of how can I make an impact for finances rather than feeling disempowered and like I'll sweep it under the rug. Yeah. And, and like, 
that an, another testament to your character and how you approach right your development uh yeah. is you had that uh that you call it a trigger or that that opportunity for insight yeah. and then automatically took it to how can i leverage this to create more fulfillment in my life mm. um we talked about the gauges and you mentioned financial so i so i so i yeah. put it up uh, for coaches that haven't had the benefit of the first 10 minutes of this yeah. is creating safe space. Mm -hmm. So we're, we haven't done that because you, right. We dive, dove right in, but we're like putting numbers to your life and we're looking at different things. <laughs> <Right>. And <laughs> all that's about is, is looking with bold honesty and making sense of where things are feeling for you now and moving forward from where they are. It's done with love and compassion. The scores don't really mean anything. The meaning comes from what are the insights we can get to have you have and be yeah. living a more fulfilled life. That's yeah. it. That's all. And I think that's really important because yeah. uh, the way that uh, I approach coaching training is yeah. – that connection, that authenticity, that really supporting the heart of a person yeah. is really, really important. And when you put somebody's life in a, a in a scoreboard, yeah. that can be jarring. Yeah. So I, I wanted to preface that, hey, That's yeah, we're, yeah, we're scoring things for context because yeah. we have an intellectual brain mm -hmm. and a really complex, abundant life. Yeah. And if we don't have that context, it's really hard for us to make any sense of it. I'm sure you cover that in the certification, like, you know, and, not, yes. and I would imagine unless you're a brand new coach, I even think brand new coaches, if you're doing life coaching, yeah, maybe more than business coaching. But if you're, if you're coming from a place of coaching people in life, you're coming into the profession because it, it mattered to you and you know how to hold safe space because that's a tender profession. Yeah. You know, that's a, you're good with people's hearts. And yeah. so. Um, I, I want to, I had a thought as I'm looking at these gauges, um, you know, I haven't talked about this, but it's what occurs to me. I love working in frameworks Yep. and I could see sitting with a client and saying, um, well, let me frame this with my frustration over with clients was often within a year, we'd be having the same conversation because they weren't taking action, right? It was, right. we'd, we'd identify a plan of yep. action. And yep. then they drag their feet and then I would try to encourage them or try to poke under look, turn over rocks and look at like, why are you not taking action? But what I'm seeing since then, I've really discovered frameworks and I tend to apply them to groups. But if I thought one-on-one -on -one coaching, I could see this thing on finances you're showing on the screen. There's five gauges, happiness yep. level, time alignment, engagement level, capability level, and emotional energy level. And <clears throat> I immediately see a framework. I see week one, Right. Let's let's design something for the client around happiness level as it relates to finances. And week two, I'm bringing to the table a framework for let's create something for time alignment about your finances. And I yeah. now can use the tool to actually create custom frameworks for every client just by yeah. looking at these gauges. Yes. And I actually have Our like my co-creator um, uh, uh, who has been a uh, uh, clinical psych practicing clinical psychologist he loves research he does exactly what what mm. he uses this and then creates mm. frameworks behind it yep. for each one of his clients uh, oh, so love i that. love that methodology of thinking mm. and also like for me as a, i'm a master hypnotherapist really do most of the work when i do coaching a lot of it has an emotional underpinning that's where yeah. i like to do most of my work mm. than like performance coaching or task management yeah. so for me um I'll, I'll if you're open to it i'll show you yeah. how i would use this as a bridge because yeah. oh yeah right away if i look at your life map overall what we're mm. doing is we're looking for what's an area of focus mm. and um my guess is we might find it in financial the reason is it's in your top six priority and yeah. it's the it's the biggest anomaly we yeah. look for patterns and anomalies and it's mm. way out there yeah. and what i know and then we teach all this it's i know idea. financial and work life are usually very directly connected yeah. and work life is really important to you too. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking between those two, we're probably going to find an area of focus. That's my guess going in. Yeah, and I would, like, we would have a dialogue. I would share that. How does that feel to you? You would answer. This is the quick, the, the quick version. No, I want to go to fi uh, financial. Here's what's really cool. Um, the two for me, uh, the two most impactful areas to look at one is your emotional level 
Mm. Our mind will play tricks on us. We can say things um, <laughs> where our body, it's its like the perfect barometer. Yeah. Um, and we've lost track of it in many senses. Um, this instrument measures the somatic. The question is check in with your body and trust your body's first re answer. answer. Chris, when you think about your financial life, how are you feeling inside? Are you mm. feeling positive and lifted? Mm. Uh, it's a somatic lifted it's somatic mm. or are you feeling heavy and negative and you were a three yeah so that gives me context that you are yeah. less than neutral you're on the negative side yeah here's that gives me context but i'm going to take this context in the context of your overall framework down mm. here sure. to say i know that you are generally a really actually lifted and positive person person yeah. Yeah. 7.54. And then I can look at your averages over here. And I know that financial is like, it's an all, it is of the two financial and extended family life. It's the lowest. So if you yeah. have an energy drain somewhere, it's probably here. Uh -huh. And as an emotional coach, That's I want to, I want to bring that to light yep. as any coach. I want to bring that to light and have some like curious conversations about it and for me. Yeah, yeah like these all tell a story what we're looking for and what it helps look for is the root cause we mm -hmm. want to find the root cause and put actions towards that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. for me i go to your emotional level and i say hey what's going on for you with your financial life what are the emotions or feelings that come up for you yeah when you think about your financial life can you name them mm -hmm. And if that's too real, but it's an opportunity, like, oh, could you name them? I mean, what I was totally think? listening to it. Like you yeah. were, you were no. with others, could but you were actually asking yeah, me, yeah. ask me again, ask yeah. me again. <laughs> so when you think, when you think about your financial life, yeah, um, yes, just My like consider life. it, yeah. or right, just check in with your body. And it's like, what are the emotions that come up? How are you feeling? Yeah. Frustrated, blocked, um, yep. irritated, uh, confused at times, you know? And I can elaborate on all that, right? Because it's like, yes. I feel like I have a good plan. I like yes. what my life is. My life is now aligned with my purpose and my life's work. So just yep. why you can see like some of the other th contribution and work are higher up. Yes, yes. But yes. I'm like, the finances aren't there. And then the f irritating part is it's it's always been this thing that is, you know, like I don't care. I was, I don't want to say I don't care about money, but because I, I love to have freedom. Freedom's a high value for me. Yes. But, but I love people. And yes. it irritates me that I have to go, why do, why do people not get what I'm trying to offer or why can I not just make money? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm willing to go drive Uber or just look on LinkedIn for the next job. Like yep. that feels like I'm selling out. So yeah, y y there's that frustration like, ah, you know, mm -hmm. that's perfect. So where I like now, I, right now we're having, we, we bridged a conversation about something very real in your life. Yeah. I'm like listening as a coach, right. And saying, okay, um, well, is that sort of like, and I, I won't invite you to answer these just for time, but sure. I'm going to say, well, is that serving you today? Has that served you in the past? And I know just yesterday, right. You were like, Hey, I think some ways this is hurting me. So mm -hmm. I like, is that serving you? How is it hurting you? Is there a mindset shift there? that might actually open up a right. cleaner, right? Yeah. More full energy towards how you're feeling about finance and, and how yeah. that connects with your work, that if that shifted, maybe things would change. Yeah. Um, and I actually think there could be there. I think that would be a yeah. really relevant conversation to have with you. And I would start there before I go to any of these. I would spend all my time there. Mm. And the reason is, is like the when you're not feeling good when you're feeling frustrated mm. your time your, your your timeline is probably going to be low you're not going to go do it it feels like crap <laughs> yeah right and if right. your time limit was high <laughs> then you'd probably be doing it and suffering a lot so i would also be like uh, sure i'm not going to go tell you to spend more time on finance <laughs> until right. we deal with your your uh, how That's you're good. feeling about it yeah same like with that. capability and your engagement it's like uh -huh. we got to get you towards that uh-huh Right. We got to get your energy in a towards position before any of these other things are going to go up. So as a coach, and one of the things I skipped, because I just, I know I created, so I know it really well. Let's say I'm a brand new coach. Mm -hmm. um, well, now I can actually just use um, this, like these self-led coaching notes as yep. a bridge of conversation. 
the question I use is, hey, Chris, why don't we just like dig into like how you're feeling about your financial life? Yeah. And as you read these, I encourage you to read them out loud. And we could spend half an hour just on this session. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you could read them out loud and I say, just answer like what feels true for you. Mm-hmm. And now it's this bridge. It's not a science. All these yeah. things aren't going to yeah. feel true for you, but it's a bridge. And yeah. like, that's good. 95% of the time you're going to come in and you're just going to, it's like, you're going to feel seen. You're going to yeah. be like, this one feels exactly the way I'm feeling. Great. That's mm-hmm. awesome. You feel connected. You don't feel alone. You don't feel like you're messed up. It's like, Hey, the tools is like showing me oh. that uh-huh. it's validating exactly what I feel inside. Yeah. It's a sense making tool, bringing what's already inside you out on the table for us all to look at witness yeah. and then create an empowered action plan around. Um, and, and that's where, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So the, in the certification, what our goal is, is to create a safe space for us to look at all the elements of your life hmm. to then um, look at and find one or two areas of focus. That's it. We're not going to put actions in all of these things. Yeah. We're going to find one or two areas of focus and that's our plan for right now. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then if I'm the coach that can support you in that, then I'm going to say, Hey, here's how you work with me. If I'm yeah, not, right. I'm going to say, Hey, I've got somebody like, ideally it would be like, I got somebody that I want to refer you to. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Um, but it leaves this really rich, uh, a path to coaching people in the areas that are going to create the highest impact yep. and with clarity. And the other cool thing is, mm-hmm. is now let's say we made a plan and um, like I would do some probably somatic and some mindset reshifting around mm-hmm. finance. And then like you thought about a framework mm-hmm. and then it's like, okay, how does it feel to move into this plan? Are you excited for it? Are you ready? Are you yeah. motivated? That's going to, boom, your engagement's going to go up. Your commitment's yeah, going to go up because we worked on the emotion first. Yeah, that's good. And yeah. now it could be two weeks. It could be a month. It's like, hey, I, I don't even have to get you to take the whole thing. I can just bring this up and say, hey, about a month ago, you were feeling like this way about your financial life. Yeah. If we came in here and, and looked at these categories again, how are you feeling? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Like you'll see this, you'll see the switch. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I work, I do some transformation, some transformation retreats. We'll have people come in and do an intensive for like two or three days. Mm-hmm. I have seen like sh- major shifts mm-hmm. where the whole, like whole mm-hmm. thing like comes way over mm-hmm. in the span of a weekend because wow. perspective changes. They're right. seen and heard in a, in, in a place of acceptance. And then they take responsibility, empowered wow. action. Yeah. Even if that action hasn't taken place, their whole energy shifts. Right. Um, Got it. So yeah, yeah I'm glad, cool. I, I'm glad you, 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 you allowed us to open it up because oh yeah, it's people so cool. can get a sense of, uh, Oh, should I actually show you? There's also a, a I'm in okay. coach mode right now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> if we were chatting, um, I, I could put your action notes in here. Oh, nice. You yeah. would see them. Yeah. I would see them and you have a journal as well. If you're the client, so you can kind of use it as an accountability um, tool as yeah. you're coaching with people. Yeah, that's so cool. I love that. So how? So walk me through a little bit of how the uh, 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 certification works. Like how if I'm a coach and this is a cool tool and I want to use it, like how does it work? Is it how long is it? Um, just give me some of the details. I know some people are going to be like, "This is incredible. I want to add this tool to my business." So yeah, and and I I. I, and I hope if they do, because that's that's my goal is to get this in, into yep. the hands of caring, connected coaches so that they can really leverage their magic that they already have in their hand in yep. an even more accelerated, faster way. So uh, it's a five five week course. I, I do a class every Friday for five weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of them are half days. Uh, there's two full days in there. Uh, it's uh, you register. If you're still not sure, take the assessment. I offer coaches a free one. So you get access, take it. You can look at your own life map. If you, as a coach, you'll kind of put together how you would start to use it. Just like you, you already have. And, and hopefully by then you're like, yeah, I can use this in my practice. Uh, You enroll on my, on, on the website. My next class is October 13th. And at the end of it, you, and you got to do the work. So here's, here's my expectation. Here's what I can tell coaches and what to expect. Um, you're going to get way more out of the class than what you probably expected. 
because uh, yes, we teach you the tool and how to do this thing that you will yeah. now have a product to sell. Yes, we do that. Mm. But what we d- discuss about how we do the work, how we create safe space, you'll come out with 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 skills and knowledge, not just from the group more than you yeah. expected. You're going to have a hell of a lot more fun than you expect in any training program. I like to have fun. Like I, <laughs> I my big bird costume isn't right here, but I've brought big bird into this. I brought like, like, nice. it's just like, we're going to have fun. Uh, nice. Yes. This is important, serious stuff. And it's important for us to laugh along the way. Uh, and you're probably going to do more work than you're maybe want to. Hmm. This isn't a, like everyone passes certification. I've right, had coaches yeah. come and say this has been the most valuable and mm. difficult. And this is these are CCF like accredited coaches yeah. that have been through months and months of training to, to say that like I really had to work for this. Yeah. So I'm looking for coaches that are committed, yep. that are ready to share their magic and use their magic in the world. And if that's if that's them, hey, it's only five Fridays. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 1950 US. Uh, you can, I've got a six pay option and the six pay option. You can like, as soon as you're certified, you've got a product that the coaches are, are charging three to 500 bucks for that initial, uh, piece. Or if you're using it as a, as an attraction for your bigger offer, you've got, you've got a product that you can instantly use Yeah, yeah, yeah. after you've done the work, uh, <laughs> you can instantly use it. And so, uh, that's how it works. <laughs> So good. So good. I love it. I love it. It's um, a really uh, important, uh, I think, time in coaching, um, whereas an industry, more and more people have come in, which has diluted maybe people's respect or appreciation for what we do as coaches. So to have to continue to backfill tools and um, intelligent design, things that are um, earn respect because it's legit and this is a legit tool and i i I think this really has a an important place in the coaching industry so it's really Mm -hmm. cool that you pulled this together and i'm super excited to see um how this the groundswell of how this spreads in the world Um, ah thank thank you so much for seeing it for witnessing me and and the work and Mm -hmm. um giving me a platform to 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 invite other people to step into it it means i got goosebumps if you could see that's my body telling me that we're we're on the right track so thank you so much that's so good. Well, uh, those of you watching, if you want to sign up, like there's a button somewhere on this page, like click the appropriate button and uh, move move forward in the process. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, Maurice. Thanks, Chris. Take care.